Hi, I'm Tamitha Scove with your solar storm forecast for the week of February 4th. The sun has been moderately flare active over the past week or so, mainly because of two regions, region 2268 and 2277. Those two have been giving us low-level M-class flares, and they get active for a little while, and then they die back down, and then they get active again for another couple days, and they die back down. But they refuse to go away, so we're continuing to watch them. What also is interesting is the east limb of the sun is showing some serious activity. Uh, some solar storms have been flying off, and we also have some very inter interesting uh, filaments that might be erupting soon. We also have this southern uh, coronal hole down here that's given us a few earth-directed wispy storms, but nothing dramatic yet. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see activity did pick up on the 21st and 22nd, only to die back down. And then it picked up again around the 26th and stayed busy, uh, only to die down again right before the beginning of February. And now it looks like it actually might begin to pick back up again, so stay tuned. Switching to our storm levels, we really haven't seen much in the way of solar storms other than fast wind that's come from coronal holes, and that's managed to keep us at about un unsettled conditions to active conditions over the course of the past two weeks. Although we did the other day hit a very fast solar wind stream that popped us over storm level conditions, and that kind of rattled the shield a little bit, so uh, we've actually had maybe some bad ham radio propagation over the past few days. And these storm conditions brought us a roar from all around the world, like in Russia and New Zealand. We also had aurora in Norway and in Scotland. There's a gorgeous aurora in Yellowknife and in Alberta, Canada. And gorgeous coronas in Alaska. We even caught aurora with the comet Lovejoy. And here's an aurora time lapse during flight. This was crossing the Atlantic from Nova Scotia to Ireland. We also have seen a slight radiation enhancement over the past few days. You can see it peaked here late on the 30th, but it stayed well below NOAA's S1 radiation storm level. So Tam Mullen, who took that a beautiful aurora time lapse while in flight, probably didn't see much in the way of enhanced radiation. But I'm, you ham radio and amateur radio operators uh, and people with GPS navigation at high latitudes probably have had some degradation over the past few days, but since then things have returned to normal. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And you can see this long filament here. That's the filament that's snaking around the front of the Earth side disk right now on the east limb. And it's got region 2259, which is coming around the front side. And that's actually been shown to have some activity because it's right next to that dark patch. That's a coronal hole. So there's a really interesting looking east limb right now. Also region 2266, that's that old region. You can see that thing rotating around and there's a new region just above it. And that region also is showing a lot of activity. Those should be returning Earthside in about a week. Returning to the disk, you can see region 2268 is finally moving off the west limb, so that drops our M-flare risk just a little bit, but don't count region 2277 out just yet. It's beginning to grow yet again, so it continues to be an M-flare risk for us and probably will stay an M-flare risk as it continues to transit the rest of the Earth-facing disk over the next week. Also keep an eye on region 2280. It is growing very rapidly, and that region may be an M-flare contender here in the coming days. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the next few days, NOAA is expecting active conditions with about a 35% chance of a major storm at high latitudes tapering off to about a 30% chance for a minor storm over the next few days until we get out of that high-speed stream. At mid-latitudes, we're expecting unsettled conditions with about a 15-30% to 30 chance of activity uh, over the next few days. Now we do have a, a solar storm that is going to pass us to the east and if it hits us or we see any wake at all, it'll be on February 6th into February 7th. So we're anticipating that there might be a little bit more of a st enhanced storm condition levels on the 6th through the 7th, but then it should be tapering off after that. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlooks over the next few days, NOAA is giving us about a 30% chance of an M-class flare, which then tapers down to a 20% chance over the next few days as region 2268 rotates off of the west limb. However, region 2277 and region 2280 are growing, and so those may continue to be M-flare risks over the next few days, and if they grow rapidly enough, we might actually see that M-flare risk increase as we continue through the week.
So this week looks to have a lot of potential for continued flare activity. We have regions 2277 and 2280 that are growing quite rapidly right now, and they could cause continued M flares over the next few days. And that would affect you ham and amateur radio operators, causing disruptions in your propagation from time to time. Also on the east limb we have some very interesting structures including a very long snaky kind of filament that looks pretty unstable. And if that thing rotates into the earth strike zone it could launch a solar storm that's earth directed. So we're watching that quite closely. Also right now we're kind of at the trailing end of a high speed stream and we're expecting to have continued uh, storm conditions over the next few days. So you aurora photographers, especially those at high latitudes, might get a chance for a few more pictures before it's through. After that, enjoy the calm. I'm Tam of the Scove. Thank you for watching.